Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike, back with another video. Today we're gonna to talk about when to test your one rep max, how to test your one rep max, how often, and maybe what stages of training. But before we dive in, it's gonna help me a lot. I really appreciate it. If you give this thing a thumbs up, comment below what questions you got for upcoming videos. Be sure to subscribe and check out 50% Facts. My new podcast come out every Wednesday, Spotify, iTunes, all that, all your support is much appreciated. Let's dive in. So I think the question we often get is, how do I test my one rep max? And maybe how often do I test my one rep max? So first we'll dive into how often. Um, and how often really depends on uh, your goals overall and then how long you've been training is the biggest thing. Um, there's potential, let me know. T -t type of ruski if you're into it. There's potential for a true beginner program by Kaizen Training. Uh, that's me, Barkwan, Omar Isof, uh, and our philosophies on how you can get strong if you've never trained a day in your life or if you've taken a long break, like a year, two years, decade, before uh, you want to get back in and how to get into that. But basically, when you're a true beginner, um, first couple weeks, months, etc., you can PR very, very often. I don't necessarily suggest testing your one rep max because there's almost no point, um, but hitting a rep PR of some nature, threes, fives, maybe even tens, depending on the lift, depending on the individual, depending on the goals, uh, is very common, if not um, the norm, to hit new weights, heavier loads, weekly, if not bi-weekly. Uh, I don't know if bi-weekly conversation here, side note, I think it can mean twice a week and it can also mean every other week. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if you've been training maybe a year or two years, um, depending on the individual again, because genetics, how serious you take it, your body weight, your size, and how good you are, uh, all kind of depend on it. But <clears throat> you can maybe PR every month or every other month. So four to maybe even six to eight weeks uh, is more common. The later you get in your training, I've been training for 10 years um, pretty seriously, uh, the less likely you are to PR. And if you do PR, it's not going to be the one rep max. It's going to be some kind of variation um, or some kind of rep volume, something like that. You have to change your goals, set your sights elsewhere. But uh, the later you get, how often should you test? You know, the, the, the highest level power lifter may compete two to three times a year is often what I suggest or somewhere even in the intermediate stage. Because if you're competing too often, um, you're always uh, prepping, you're always tapering, and you're not handling the volume or the variations that maybe you should to get better, uh, and it may hold back some of your progress. So the later you get, uh, two to three times a year maybe go for the big PRs, and then again, the beginners weekly. How do we actually test it? Um, now that, that, that depends obviously again on if it's a one rep max or something different, but the basics are warm up uh, like normal, kind of general warm up, I suggest, you know, an assault bike, a bicycle, a walk, something of that nature, <clears throat> five to maybe even 20 minutes, every single training session. Then you're gonna get into a little bit more specific warm up. So if you're doing lower body, try to find yourself a routine that you enjoy or that fixes the needs that you need for that day, that hits the needs that you <clears throat> are necessary to be in optimal positions and feel good for training. Uh, I do lunges on my lower body day, just body weight, a bunch of reps. Um, some people do some band work, um, some people squat the barbell, good morning the barbell, stiff leg the barbell, things of that nature, slightly more specific to the movement you're doing, and then it's time to warm up the movement itself. Uh, in terms of jumps, it's gonna obviously depend on how strong you are or what near your one rep max is. Uh, hopefully if you're following a good training program or have a really good coach, you have an idea of where your one rep max might be that day or you will as you're warming up. You just generally have a zone of maybe 5% of what you might hit that day uh, if you are testing. Because if you have no clue, um, then it's probably because you're not following a program and you, you, you have no idea of your three reps or your five reps or what's a general heavy single for you. Uh, generally speaking, taking 10 to maybe 15% jumps all the way up to maybe 80% or so is what I recommend. And you're going to do maybe sets of five or three. Normally I take the barbell for 10 and maybe a plate for myself for about 10, get enough blood flowing, and then I'm switching to threes and fives, enough to get warm but not be fatigued for the top work. Hopefully you're training enough volume in general that doesn't exhaust you. Uh, from there, 80%, 85%, I'm gonna take about 5% jumps and switch to singles around 80%. So a single around 80%, a single around 85, a single around 90, see how that feels. Another single around maybe 94 to 97%, and then I'm going for the big bucks. I'm taking another single anywhere from that 99% to maybe 104, 105. Again, depends on your judgment of that day, how you feel that day, how you're recovered, and how you're actually moving. 
Something uh, you know that's very common now is singles or hard, uh, hard, uh, heavy top sets during your regular training. Again, those are typically RPE based or percentage based to kind of get you used to doing the movement. That's for a little bit more of an intermediate or late intermediate lifter. Um, the most specific we can be right is doing singles at a heavy competition load, which is a great practice if your form is good. And that's something that I do recommend. Doing that, basing it under fatigue in a non tapered situation is going to feel different and look different than it might on a test day. The test day, hopefully if you have it set up again with a coach and a program, you're going to be fully peaked and prepped for a new one rep max. F fitness is going to be at an all time high while fatigue is at a moderate stage rather than switched sometimes during the middle of a training session or sorry, a training block, you may have high fatigue and your fitness may also be high or medium, um, but you won't be at your absolute best possible fitness to represent that one rep max, if that makes sense. Hopefully that guys helps you out a little bit testing your one rep max again Let me know below if you're interested in maybe an absolute beginner program or if you've taken a long hiatus from the gym Something to get you back involved. I'm silent Mike Instagram Twitter everywhere else. I appreciate you guys catching the next one new videos Monday Wednesday and Saturday